Welcome to live stream number 87. Today is Monday. Yay. Hope that you're ready for an awesome week. It is November 6th, 2017. Wow. I had to think about that for a second. Thank you so much for uh, taking the time to watch this video. Quick, thank you for joining me. I am in my new office. Um, I hope that that somewhat worked out for you. I'm gonna come back to that. I'm thinking that maybe there's a lot of echo in here. I'm gonna to have to address that. I'm gonna to have to listen to the live stream, uh, but that's, that's all okay. Today's topic is three out of 40 great tips inside of Fusion 360. Now, I have a couple of things I wanna to touch on um, on today's live stream about, I took last week off, what happened, what's going on, but I want to come back to that. I want to start out inside of Fusion 360 because I know some of you guys don't really care about what's going on with me, but it's fine. You just want the Fusion 360 stuff. So let me set it up for today's uh, live stream. So um, my good friend Scott, uh, Scott Morris, who is working for a Autodesk reseller in New Zealand, sent me a link. He did a presentation at AU Australia. I'm gonna come back to AU in a little bit. Um, and where he did a tips and tricks session with 40 tips and tricks uh, within Fusion 360. And I, I don't know about you, I love these tips and tricks. Today, I will share you three of my favorites out of that. So we're gonna jump into that. Now, you will find Scott's presentation down in the description area. So if you go down there, you will also find my email address. But if you go down there, you will see Scott's presentations. Great presentation, you should definitely check it out. You should subscribe to their YouTube channel, thumbs up and all that stuff. Then made me think of my good friend, John Saunders. John just celebrated his Fusion Friday 100th, not very long ago. And he also did a great tips and tricks session. So today is just a lot of tips and tricks. Um, what, you know, is kind of nice to sit back once in a while and just kind of like, trying to take some of those tips and tricks in. Now I'm gonna show you three that I think uh, that is great present or great tips that I think you should know about. And then I'm gonna come back again on the camera and talk a little bit about what happens with me. So if you don't care all about that, just let's get into Fusion, okay. All right, so um, inside of Fusion here, um, so, so Scott, and I think that John also highlighted these, some of these tips and tricks. The one of them that I think a lot of people are kind of like questioned. If you're looking up at the view cube, you will see that uh, the top here, and you will see that it has Y up, and front have a Z kind of like aligned to it. Now, if you go into your preferences, click your name, click preferences, um, inside the settings, you can actually, under the first tab, you can choose default modeling orientation. Now, as default, when you start out in Fusion, it is set to Y up, and I'm gonna come back to that in a second, but you can actually switch it to Z up. So if you set that one, you hit apply, hit okay. Now, it will not change right out of the bat, but if I'm opening a new model, you will see that now it has changed. So back in the old one, how it is kind of like by default, you got top over here, and, and Y green is up, the new drawing, you got top over here, and Z is, is up. So why, why is it like that, and why do I have it the way I have it? Well, um, back ages ago, when CAD came out, or like, <laughs> at least longer than I have used CAD, um, CAD companies have always looked at uh, the front plane as kind of like being this zero kind of plane. Um, that's why that when you're looking at the old way of doing things, uh, like here, if front plane is zero, then Z is kind of like aligned with that. Um, there's no rules for this, okay? So so don't be mad at anybody, um, but, but that's kind of like how it always been, the front, have always been kind of like the CAD neutral. Um, but then if you're like doing any CNC machining, or you kind of like want top, at least if you're using, you know, vertical CNC machines, you kind of want Z to follow 
you know, the top. That's kind of like the most normal thing. So yes, into the preferences, preferences, you can change that to be like this. And I would encourage you to do that um, if you if if that's what you what you kind of prefer. Um, now, why haven't I switched mine? I think I've just used cat so long that I kind of like know in the back of my head that front is kind of like the default for for CAD systems, and then it's the default also that you know if you install Fusion 360, that's how it's set from from ground zero. So if I start switching around, then it's maybe confusing some people. That is a great tr uh, tip. You should definitely know about that. All right, let's go into uh, tip number two. Another one that uh, Scott brought up that I think maybe um, maybe people have kind of missed is how you can now do tangent dimensions. So if I go in and open up a sketch inside of Fusion here, and I'm just gonna draw two circles, I'm gonna hit C for circle on my keyboard, and just get a circle there, and hit a circle there. Now if I hit D for dimension, I like these shortcut keys, and I just place a dimension between here, you will see it defaults to a dimension between uh, the two centers. That's the default inside of Fusion. Now, if you right click with your mouse in, you gotta have the dimension tool active, so D for dimension. If you right click, you will see down here, you get an option to pick uh, a circle tangent. Now it's default to center, what we just saw. So if I select tangent, and I select here, you will see I get kind of like a little X next to my circle. That's where Fusion's going to tangent to. So if I select the in, if I select here, and then go over and select over here, you will see that I get that tangent dimension uh, between there. Now if I hit just hit escape one second, you'll see that now my, look at my cursor, I lost the dimension tool by hitting escape. I actually got all the way out of the dimension. So let me get back into dimension again by hitting D, D for dimension. Um, if I right click, you will see that it jumped back into uh, center. So it will always jump back into center. So if I hit uh, tangent again, and this time, um, oh, now I had that selected. Silly, delete that. Um, D, right click, tangent. If I select out here, right, and I select over here on the inside here, then it will be tangent to those two sides, okay? If I right click again, again, it jumps back to center, so you gotta know about this right click. If I select from outside of this circle to the outside of this circle, it will be tangent to that. So that's another good tip that I don't think that I am doing a good enough job. Well, maybe we haven't gone across anything, but how would you know if nobody told you it would be hard to find out how you do a <laughs> tangent dimension um, the last one I want to show um, keep this a relative probably short uh, live stream today <laughs> the other thing that is extremely important that you know about is versions so if we go over to our data panel over here and we scroll down you will see that we get these V numbers next to some of of our parts here. So this one here has four versions. Uh, the, remember when we did the mole cavity, that one ended up having seven versions. Now you will see, if you're looking at some of the older ones we have done, let's see here. Oh, look at this one. We did simulation on this one, 17 versions. Now, if you click on the, the little V version here, you get a, a dialogue that shows up and if I click on show all 17 versions, you get a long list. Now versions is every time we save, right? Um, and I've had a couple of people ask me, how do I eliminate versions? And the only reason that I could think about somebody want to not show a version would be if you somehow think that your boss might would get upset that you have a lot of versions. So how did you get to the to the to the end point? You can actually you can actually save um, you can actually save parts without creating a version. You're gonna have to watch Scott's <laughs> uh, forty tips on that. Um, I personally think that hey, I have no problem showing anybody how 
how I get to an end result, even if it's a little bit weird. But what you can do is if you're getting, so here we have number 17 of versions. If we suddenly realize that version number 10, in here now you can double click and you can actually, um, oh, you can't double click, it doesn't lie. Uh, you can click over here on the, little, <laughs> on the little arrow, you can move version 10 up to be version 18. So if you, if you found out that 10 was actually the one you want, uh, you can click here to promote it. And when I click on it, it's actually just gonna think a second. Uh, you can see the wheel is spinning up here and we will now get an 18th version. What means that we just brought number 10 up. So we still, number 10 is still number 10 down here. So this one here and this one are now the same version. A copy pretty much of one of the other. Uh, so you should definitely know that every time you're saving, you can go back and, and grab other versions. What is absolutely awesome and really useful um, to do. So just don't think of it as like, you know, keeping track of where you have been. It's not the government watching you. Just think of it as a way that you can actually record, uh, you know, every time you save and you can go back. I use it all the time and I absolutely love it. Okay, so just to... That was my free tips. How you can flip up the, the Z or the Y, you need to know about that. Tangent dimensions, because how else would you know? Uh, and then the version thing here. We have done other live streams on it. Definitely you can search on those. Okay, that is the fusion um, that, I'm gonna, that I'm gonna show today. So that was kind of short. I hope it was useful. Don't forget, go down to the description area watch Scott's presentation, and also check out John Saunders. If you don't know about these two guys, you should definitely follow them. They're awesome guys. Back to me. It's all about me. Back to me. All right, let's talk a little bit about what has been going on. I'm so sorry that I was gone all last week. Things went a little crazy, um, but everything is, is good. First of all, uh, I moved the office. It's a mess in here. Um, just, just check out like bins of stuff and cameras. I'm gonna show you over here. Like, look at my computer mess of a wire over here. This is absolutely <laughs> that is horrible. All right, I had to move my office, um, and I'm probably gonna do I'm probably gonna do a video on my office here. Not a live stream. It's gonna be a video. Some people wouldn't care, but some people I think maybe will find it interesting what I'm trying to do with this new office now. The reason I'm moving office is because my old office that you maybe have seen some live stream in is becoming a nursery. So my wife and I are expecting, super exciting. Um, and what happened last week was that uh, suddenly the doctors was not quite sure about the due date for that was set for the baby. What have meant that I had to cancel uh, going to Autodesk University in Las Vegas in a week that was actually where i was planning on going i know i know i had created some breakfast appointments with some of you guys i have reached out all of you guys should have gotten an email from me if you haven't seen that i'm so sorry uh, i was going to do two presentations there um but of course you know i can't i can't miss uh miss this uh so i had to cancel my au presentation now if you had signed up to uh, one of my two presentations. I've got two absolutely awesome uh, people to take over my presentation, so they're not going away. One of them was uh, in regards to, uh, to CAM, how to get the basics with CAM. So Marty, who is a great friend of mine, a colleague, is going to, uh, to do that one. So I will be back here. I was hoping to do some live streams at AU, showing you guys what was going on. It's not happening, but I will then be doing live streams from this new office and hope, sounds like there's a lot of echo, but hey, we'll figure all that out. I hope this, um, it's good to be back. I hope this was somewhat useful, at least with the with a few uh, tips um, that was in there. Definitely again, thanks to Scott and for John for <laughs> providing some extra ones down in the description area. That's it. Um, I have planned the rest of the week um, in, in the live stream. so. Tomorrow, same, and all at the same time. Um, tomorrow, we're gonna do, remember we did a few weeks ago, we did like a coffee spoon for the arrow press, and it was kind of like best practices how you would start out with that one. Well, I threw out a challenge to some of you guys about, um, you know, and some of you took up on it, what I really appreciate, 
uh, how you would go ahead and model that. So I think tomorrow it could be kind of fun. I want to show you a different way to uh, model that spoon up. Still a beginner, still perfectly fine, but just another way to do it. Um, Wednesday and Thursday, we're going to have some fun with some sculpting. Um, we are going to uh, model up um, some sculpting and then we're going to combine the two on Thursday. We're going to do an, a hammer, I think, like a hammer you're hitting and nailing with. Um, so that should be super fun Wednesday and Thursday. And then Friday, it's all about cam. And uh, we're going to talk about the Heights tab. That was an email I got. So don't forget, down in the description area of the email, you of of the video, you will find my email address, last.christiansonautodesk.com. More than welcome to send me any future topics you would like to see. So Friday is when we're gonna attack one of those on uh, talk about the high step. That was all I had planned on. 109 people in here today, really appreciate it. Thank you so much uh, for, uh, for taking the time to join the live streams. I really appreciate it. Do the thumbs up if you like them. Thumbs down if you don't, be honest. And of course, if you haven't already, uh, it will mean the world to me if you'll hit that subscribe button. And then if you hit that bell next to it, I think you should get all the notifications uh, about these uh, live streams. I'm gonna end it here. It was a little short one uh, today, with at least inside of Fusion. Tomorrow, hopefully we're back rocking um, on the um, good old live stream path, whatever. I really appreciate it, guys. Thank you so much. I'm going to do what I normally do. I'm going to end the broadcast and then I'm going to jump in and say hi to everybody in the live stream. Take care. Hope to see you tomorrow. Bye.